Luke and Nate here at the Outdoor Boys YouTube channel and today we're at seven and a half thousand feet above sea level in the Rocky Mountains and we are going to be doing some winter survival camping. You ready Nate? Yeah! The snow is so deep, so wet. Every step is so much work. Oh, got a long ways to go. Pulling Nathan on the sled uphill through the deep snow is just too much. It's killing me. But the snow is too deep for him to walk through. So I'm finding what I gotta do is go up and break trail and break trail back and try to make a little trench the width of the toboggan. Then I can pull the toboggan up and Nathan can walk behind the toboggan, but it's doubling my work. Whew. Well, I think I just found our campsite. There's a couple dead trees I can chop up and use for firewood and building materials. The snow's deep enough to help me build my shelter. All right, let's break trail back and get Nathan. This is very different winter camping than what we did in Alaska a couple weeks ago. In Alaska, it was about the cold. The snow was so light and powdery, and it was only like 30 inches deep. This is heavy, wet, deep snow, and it is fighting us every step of the way. I'm so exhausted, and I haven't even begun building camp. You tired, buddy? Yeah. I'm exhausted. You got a snow chair, don't you? Camera gets two seats. All right. Well, the stairs aren't exactly to code, but they'll do. Yeah, I could be getting old, but it seems to me that the worst part of sleeping in a survival shelter is the lumps on the ground. So lay down in your shelter a few times, find some good position, smooth it out, make sure it's not level, get the rocks out of there, because it's a lot easier to fix it now than in the middle of the night. All right, I've done a lot of digging. Now it's time to do a lot of chopping. There we go, nice dead aspen right there. That's some firewood. We're at seven and a half thousand feet above sea level. It's almost a mile and a half. And it's just harder to catch your breath. I find myself getting winded so easily. <sighs> I 
this log isn't that heavy, but I have to chop it up into smaller pieces because if I pick up a 50 or 70 pound log, I sink so far down in the snow, it's just grueling to get anywhere. I have so much trouble with snowshoes because I wear a size 14 boot. I usually can't get the heel strap around the boot, so I'm constantly coming out of them. They just don't fit well. <sighs> Big boy problems. Ugh. Well, it's looking pretty good from this angle, but we gotta get inside and see if we missed anything. Yeah, a big hole right there, and it's thin in the back. The snow. Hey, Nathan, what do you think of this so far? Yeah. Here, go inside. Yeah, go check it out. That, that, is that for the fireplace? No, that's for sleeping. Yeah. Look at that. Look how far back in there you fit. Uh. Is it warmer at it, back there? If I'm going to sleep well tonight, I need a good insulator between me and the ground. And I'm going to be using reindeer pelts. They've got these hollow hairs that are excellent insulators. And they're quite thick and just, it's a luxurious thing to sleep on. Now, me and Nathan have used these a few times in winter camping, and I just love it. Instead of sleeping bags, we're going to be using this bison pelt. This thing's like six and a half feet by seven and a half feet. It's massive but it is so thick. And uh, that should keep me and Nathan plenty warm tonight. Oh, I'm exhausted, but I'm excited. I have not slept in a snow cave since I was a little kid. We used to do it all the time up in Alaska when I was a kid. Now I need to get a fire started. And to do that, I need some dry pine. It's not covered in snow and ice. Only get the branches that don't have snow on it. When it's cold and everything's caked in ice, it takes a lot of heat to get the wood to ignite. So grab as much kindling as you can get your hands on. Went to all this effort to find dry wood. Now we gotta keep it dry. Don't lay it in the snow. Don't handle it with wet gloves. Find a place where it'll touch as little ice as possible. And let it sit there while you get your fire ready. So I've got two of the big logs stacked up to act as a little bit of a heat reflector. I'm putting a couple other logs over here to thaw out. Just need to start building a fire. We'll take some of these relatively dry wood chips. We're gonna start with the fine stuff. We want this. Should make a nice crunchy sound. If it's bending too much, it's green. It's gonna be a hard time lighting it. I got my favorite fire starter, which is a bag of shredded jute. Shredded jute is just shredded twine. I take a big ball of twine and put it on a belt sander and it just does this to it and it lights up like crazy. And if I'm not gonna use matches, my favorite thing to use is a blast match. It's just this ferrous rod and a piece of steel. You hold this tab down and you just strike it like that. And it makes a spark, lights up really good. Check this out. See, look at that.
you see lots of smoke like that it means you're smothering the fire but that's kind of a necessary evil in cold weather I'll put all this wood on it and let it heat up before it'll catch fire Nice little no match campfire. Ooh, that's roaring. Well, the sun is setting and the fire is roaring and Nathan here is hungry. So we need to make some dinner. But being the kind of strange person that I am, I didn't bring a frying pan or a pot or any normal stuff like that. Instead, what I did is I got this $15 aluminum shovel, which I knew I would need. I stripped all the paint off it and polished it. And then I seasoned it like you would cast iron using peanut oil and a butane torch. And then I baked it in my oven at about 500 degrees for three hours. So this is a food grade non-stick avalanche shovel. <laughs> and we're going to cook fajitas and quesadillas on this thing. Got the shovel up against the fire drying and letting it get nice and hot. Okay, I made this absolutely gorgeous fajita marinade yesterday and put it in this jar. It's basically orange juice, lime juice, cumin, paprika, and Worcestershire sauce. I made up some tomatilla salsa, some guacamole, yeah, sour cream, pico de gallo. So Nathan is not much of a fajita man, so for him, I'm going to make a quesadilla. Yeah, I need I need some kitchen space here. All right, there we go. All the cabinet space you could ever want in a kitchen. Now check that out. Is that a good quesadilla? Yeah. Is that good, Nathan? Ooh. Look at that. Combine the meat and the vegetables. I'll warm up my tortilla here. Okay. Guacamole. So good. This is not too bad. I've got Nathan here with me, a roaring fire, a root beer, and all the fajitas I could eat. <laughs> like I said, I didn't bring any uh, cooking utensils, so I just got a number 10 tin can and a bit of wire, and that's going to be our, our kettle for today. No, is that real hot chocolate? That is real hot chocolate. At the bottom of a spoon. Oh, it's still a lot. I have to be shy yellow if I was all yellow trying. They're gonna put one reindeer hide on top of Nathan. They're gonna wrap up in the buffalo hide. Oh. There you go, buddy. Alright, buddy, you warm? Are you comfy? <laughs> Alright, you can go to sleep, buddy. Well, Nathan's tucked in under a big pile of animal hides and the fire's doing its thing. I'm just going to sit here for a little bit and relax. And I'm going to call it a night. All right, I'm going to try to get in here, but Nathan's a bit of a bed hog, so we'll see if I can fit. <laughs> well, my feet are sticking out a little bit, so that's a little worrying. But uh, we'll see how well this goes. I'm warm right now. We'll see if it lasts. I'll see you guys in a little bit. Well, good morning. It's about 7 a.m. and uh, we're, we're pretty toasty warm. Fire went out a long time ago. Didn't matter. We've got the, the hides and they're doing their job. You can watch out. I don't want to squish it. Uh, 
Well, I was hoping to start the fire off the coals, but it's looking pretty dead. I'm not feeling any heat, but let's root around and see if we can't find a hot spot. A little warmth coming out of there. Oh, there's one. one tiny little coal. Got my tin can cooking pot, make sure it's bone dry, and we're gonna add peanut oil to it. So we're just gonna use these little dinner biscuits that come in the can. It doesn't really matter which brand. Take them with your grubby, dirty camping hands. Make a little ring out of it. All right, let's test the oil and see where we're at. There we go. That is a beautiful donut. While it's still hot and a little oily, dump it into a bag of powdered sugar. That is a very delicious campfire donut right there. You want to use my stick? Mmm, that's so delicious. Warm donuts. That's not too bad. You want some more donut? Mmm. When these things are hot, they just taste absolutely delicious, just like a homemade donut. But once they cool down, they kind of taste like a biscuit. So this is a food enjoyed fresh and hot. Hold oh, on, oh, you, you got a little white powder on your nose there. That's how he stays so active. My hands are warming up from the fire on. These camping trips always follow the same pattern. The first day is so hectic. I'm chopping wood, I'm building shelters, all this stuff. Second day, it's just relaxing and cooking food. You like that? All right, now we're gonna make lunch. And for that, we're going to make corn dogs. What I have here is corn dog batter. It's really simple to make. This is actually the recipe based off of the famous corn dogs at Disneyland. It's basically one part cornmeal, one part flour, a couple teaspoons of baking soda, honey, and sugar, and a touch of salt. It's kind of a sweet batter. I'll stick a hot dog on a stick. Making it. Oh, oh, look at that. Daddy? Look at that. Is that not a gorgeous corn dog? All right, we'll just let it sit there and cool for a little bit. Set my hot dog. Here, just give it a bite right there on the corner with it. Um, um, I kind of like it. Yeah, you kind of like that? Now, you know what we got to do before we leave? What? We've got to burn all of this wood, including the roof. We've got to burn the roof down. What, what? Because it's such a high risk area for forest fires in the summertime, we don't want to leave any piles of dead wood laying around, including the boughs that we used for our roof. Nathan, you ready to go down the mountain? Yeah. Well, it took us like an hour or so to break trail uphill. Nathan's gonna do it in seconds. All right, good luck, Nate. Well, we hope you guys enjoyed watching this video as much as we enjoyed making it. Unfortunately, YouTube disabled comments last year because my kids are in the video. So if you want to leave a comment or suggest a different type of video you want to see, follow us on Facebook. Leave a comment. We really appreciate it. But thanks for watching and have a great day. If you like this video, don't forget to check out the Outdoor Boys YouTube channel where we have hundreds of videos just like this. And don't forget to click subscribe so you can see other great videos every Saturday morning. And hit that bell button so you'll get notifications. Thanks for watching.